What's up, YouTube? So before we can start with this video, on first take, they're going to be talking about how does Patrick Mahomes' new contract that is just new huge contract that he just signed affect other players? So let's see what they have to say about that. The name that comes to my mind, obviously, I thought about Lamar Jackson as well, but I also thought about Deshaun Watson. I thought about Deshaun Watson in Houston because he's everything to that franchise. We yeah, so Deshaun Watson is definitely a baller. I just don't understand why the Houston Texans would let DeAndre Hopkins get away from him. I mean, there's one season there where he didn't drop a ball. He didn't drop one ball. So let's continue. Know this, we love and appreciate everything that J.J. Watt is, not just as a player, but as a person. We know they have some talent on that squad as well. But Deshaun Watson is really the face of that franchise. Let's just call it like we see it. If it were not for him, we wouldn't even be thinking about the Houston Texans that much. And then when you take into account some recent issues that Bill O'Brien has had with the franchise, whether it's a GM being removed, whether it's uh, players not having their extensions granted or anything like that, there's been a lot of question marks about the Houston Texans under the stewardship of Bill O'Brien. But where it fades away is once the games start playing because he's got somebody like Deshaun Watson to come to his rescue and really deliver the goods to keep them above water and as, and as a respectable franchise and a playoff team. So in light of that reality and his, his significance and what he means to the Houston Texans, considering what Patrick Mahomes means to the Kansas City Chiefs, let me tell you something. Deshaun Watson is no Patrick Mahomes, but if there's somebody that's got superstar potem potential written all over them, who could be rivaling Patrick Mahomes in the future. It ain't just Lamar Jackson. It's still Sean Watson, too. Yeah, so I definitely agree with Stephen A. Smith there. Uh, Patrick Mahomes isn't the only a superstar quarterback in the league at this point. So Deshaun Watson's definitely a baller taking care of business. Again, I don't know why the Houston Texans will let DeAndre Hopkins get away from them because they they were a sick duo. Um, and as far as Lamar Jackson, you know, he's the reigning MVP. Um, he's an absolute baller. So I say both of those guys are definitely threats to uh, Patrick Mahomes. Um, so let's take a quick look at their stats, uh, Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson. So Deshaun Watson's stats go, um, so he threw for 3,852 yards. That's 13th overall for quarterbacks. He threw for 26 touchdowns. That's 8th eight, overall for quarterbacks. He threw 12 interceptions. That's 20th overall for quarterbacks. And his QBR is 68.7. That's 7th overall for quarterbacks. So at least to say Deshaun Watson is a baller. He really takes care of business, and he's definitely a threat to Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so let's take a quick look at Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson threw for 3,127 yards last year. That's 22nd overall for quarterbacks. And he threw 36 touchdowns. That's first overall for quarterbacks. Number one for quarterbacks. He threw six interceptions. That's eighth overall for quarterbacks. And his QBR was 81.8. That's first for quarterbacks. Number one overall for quarterbacks. So both of those quarterbacks are needless to say, you know, absolutely ballers and definitely a threat to Patrick Mahomes. And like I said, last year, Lamar Jackson won the MVP and just kind of fell apart during the playoffs. Um, but definitely, these guys, the whole, all three of those guys are absolute ballers and have a feeling it's going to come down to, you know, who's able to stay healthy and who has uh, the most amount of uh, pro bowlers on their team to be winning the most amount of Super Bowls and injuries. So, yeah, definitely. So let's continue. Yeah, I think Watson benefits, I think, you know, to an extent Dak does. But I think it also kind of hurts those guys. Look, word is that Watson wanted a three-year deal, um, that Dak wants a four-year deal, not a five-year deal. And so Patrick Mahomes signing a 10-year extension, and by the way, really not getting much money up front for it, I, I don't know that that's necessarily good, with re good for any of these quarterbacks that are due a deal on the horizon. Sure, you know, the, the average you know, per year is going to go up, and that's going to help guys at the position. But guys, think about this. Over the next three years, uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to make the same money as Teddy Bridgewater. Like, to me, Patrick Mahomes, if you're going to give up your rights for this long, uh, you need to get something. Like, if you care about time value of money and compound interest, like, uh, like, you need to get more now for doing this deal. To me, it's just so long. Put it this way. You go back to 2010. Peyton Manning is the highest paid player in 2010, 10 years ago, uh, on a contract where he was, his average per year was $14 million. We're like triple that at this point. So 
I, I like to think about ten years from now, quarterbacks with with you know new new media deals, the influx in terms of how gambling is going to affect the sport. Like quarterbacks might be making eighty million a year at that point. Might be making more than that at that point. This one to me, it, you know, it. it I, listen, I'm never going to be critical of somebody that puts pen to paper on a deal that's going to give them $500 million. So I'm not being critical in that res- respect. But I think you also have to look at it from the standpoint of like, what are you doing for your future, your family's future? Well, Matt, beyond they'll probably- that? And- yeah, so I couldn't understand what he means with that. Um, so 10 years, I thought 10 years was kind of a little bit too long uh, personally. But I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to work the long game and keep who they think is going to be one of the best quarterbacks ever on their team for the next 10 years locked down. Um, but again, it seems so what Patrick Holmes got, what, $140 million up front, whether he gets injured or not, he's going to get that 140. And what was his contract was what just under what $500 million or what was that half a billion almost. Um, so that's around, right around what I don't know about forty eight million dollars a year somewhere around there, um, and I I don't know one forty up front. I'm probably thinking I want to get at least just under half of that. So what would half would be uh, what five hundred million? What two point five? Uh, or two hundred fifty million? Yeah. So I don't. Know, it does seem kind of low. And like you said, in a couple of years, quarterbacks might be making more more eighty million dollars a year, or maybe even a hundred million dollars a year. And here's Patrick Mahomes is only making, what, what, $48 million a year? So that's going to look kind of bad. He's going to be getting kind of cheated uh, in a long game. Everything seems good now, but in a long game, it might not look so profitable. Um, so I don't know. Let's continue. Max, I get the point about trying to, to cement your legacy. The guy's in his mid-20s. He's got plenty of time to worry about that, and there have been plenty of good quarterbacks that have made a lot of but- money and have made the talent around them better without just taking less money. I'm I'm sure, look, he'll be, what, 34 when the deal is over? Like, you know, he can rework it. They probably will if he stays healthy as great as we all think he can be. Right. Okay, but they'll probably rework it at some point if he turns out to be justifying the deal and all that. Here's the bottom line. The players get the same percentage of the money altogether. So resetting the market doesn't help the players versus the owners. It helps your position versus other positions. Quarterbacks are already overpaid. Teams that pay their quarterback. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I would not say that quarterbacks are overpaid. I mean, that doesn't make any type of sense at all. I've heard and read plenty of times that quarterback is probably the hardest position to play in sports. So definitely, there's no quarterback that's been overpaid. If anything, you can pay a quarterback way more because you need a good a uh, solid quarterback in order in order to be successful in the NFL. Running back's not going to cut it. Wide receiver's not going to cut it. You need a, a good uh, quarterback to be able to take your team to where you want to get to. And in America, football is probably the biggest sport at this point in time out of the big three. So I don't know. Let's continue. Sometimes are in trouble because they've overpaid that position. Now, Mahomes is the best of the bunch. So he could have shattered the market and reset because the quarterback the market the market's going to reset anyway it's going to go up anyway he could have done it out of proportion to what it would have been right and he would have shifted even more money toward quarterbacks which is a bad trend in fact he just broke the record as a normal guy more or less would the next guy up would break it maybe a little bit more than that and down the road actually didn't tie it to the percentage of the cap, so maybe it actually, the quarterback market falls a little bit more back in line. That's a good market correction. Like, right now, quarterbacks get too much as a percentage of the cap, and and Mahomes feels obviously... So there's no way quarterbacks get too much of the cap. Like I said, they could probably be uh, deserve more. And as far as, you know, different quarterbacks making money after this Patrick Mahomes deal... Um, you know, Lamar Jackson's definitely going to sign a huge contract. Deshaun Watson's definitely going to sign a huge contract, and they'll deserve it. So is it going to be around $500 million? I don't know, unless they win a Super Bowl just like, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes. Because LeVar Aaron, I mean, LeVar Aaronson, wow. Uh, Lamar Jackson already has the MVP. He's reigning MVP right now. So if he went to the Super Bowl next year, he has perfect bargaining chips. Like, look. I did exactly what Patrick Mahomes did, and he got just under a half billion dollars. So that's what I want. Actually, I want over a half billion dollars because I'm the next person in line. So I, as far as that, that definitely the bargaining chips definitely jumped up. And the same thing for Dak Prescott. 
you know, Dak Prescott's been holding out this whole time because he wants to get a better contract. And definitely, the, with the moves that Patrick Mahomes made, it has to, that has to add a couple million dollars to Dak Prescott's contract uh, that he's going to be looking to sign. At first, I thought it was kind of bad, but then I started thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute, this is pretty good because that's going to jump up the value of being a quarterback. So I think all those, I mean, this is pretty much good. This is good for all the quarterbacks. Now, will they get a half million dollars? I don't know, probably not. But, you know, Denshaw Watson, Lamar Jackson, those guys are going to get paid. So let's continue. Satisfied with the half well, billion if he earns it all, at least 140 million guaranteed. And, and I think has done a good thing here for himself, considering his team will be able to put a winner around him, well, theoretically. Well, that, that, that's from a general perspective, I don't know. macro perspective, and I get where you're coming from, Max, but what I would say to you and, in, 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 you know, to rebut that is that, again, what Tim brought up is a good point because you've got Deshaun Watson. He wants a three-year deal similar to what, you know, Laramie Tunso signed with, with, with the Texans in, in April for like $76.3 million. Why? Because they're looking at uh, no labor strife. You got a new 10-year collective bargaining agreement. They see how the sport has exploded over the last 10 years. Tim just highlighted what Peyton Manning was making in 2010 and how it's damn it's, it's triple that now at least damn near for, you know, a lot of NFL quarterbacks. And if you're Deshaun Watson, if you're the Dak Prescott of the world or people like that, you're anticipating that in four years from now, it's going to be vastly different. The landscape is going to be vastly different than what it is right now. And so as a result of that, again, we're looking at Patrick Mahomes in terms of the total number. We're not paying as much attention to the guarantees. We're thinking about the length of those contracts and how it might compel people, might compel teams to be even stronger willed about getting guys signed a long-term deal, which is where negotiations could go awry. So I get where Tim, Tim is coming from on that. Listen, the, 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 the part of the key is, is when you get your money. Like, there's a reason why you guys want it up front, is they want to put it to work. They want it to, they want to make it useful in, in that regard. And so when you think about the fact over the next three years, he's, he's in the, the, the Teddy Bridgewater range. When Teddy Bridgewater was, was barely breaking the threshold of being a starter, you can pair that. You think about Kirk Cousins.